In the quiet sanctum of Archbishop Killian's room, the atmosphere bore the weight of uncertainty. The scene unfolded as the Archbishop directed his penetrating gaze toward his concerned subordinate. What happened to the Holy Knights? Killian's voice resonated through the chamber, carrying an undertone of urgency. The subordinate, tasked with unraveling the intricacies of the Holy Knights' predicament, explained that the revered order was grappling with profound issues. A somber revelation followed. The Holy Knights would cease all future operations. The news hit Killian like a tidal wave of disbelief and frustration. The Archbishop's controlled demeanor gave way to unrestrained anger, manifesting in a forceful sweep of his arm that sent utensils crashing onto the table. The metallic clatter echoed in the room as shards of broken utensils scattered across the polished floor. Killian's mind raced, attributing the upheaval to none other than Mikhail Volpurgis, an ominous name synonymous with chaos. As the messenger left the room, the door swung open to admit Heron, a high priest with silver hair that seemed to shimmer in the dim light. Heron, sensing the tension in the air, approached the agitated archbishop cautiously. Killian wasted no time in divulging the disconcerting news to Heron. The Holy Knights had halted all operations indefinitely. The gravity of the situation struck Heron, his eyes widening in shock. Yet, before Killian could gauge Heron's reaction, Heron's eyes transformed into an eerie, demonic gaze. A fleeting moment of otherworldly disturbance that hinted at the depth of Heron's emotions. Swiftly regaining composure, Heron's eyes reverted to their normal state. Inquisitively, he sought the reason behind the abrupt suspension of the Holy Knight's activities. Killian, his expression stern and unwavering, laid the blame at the feet of Mikhail Volporgus. A malevolent force, an evil magician disrupting the sacred order within the Holy Nation. Heron absorbed the revelation, his mind grappling with the implications. Why would Mikhail jeopardize the harmony of the Holy Knights? Killian, seeking insight beyond his own discernment, turned to Heron, urging him to trust his intuition. Do you mean foreknowledge? Heron inquired, but the heavens had not yet granted him the foresight necessary for such a situation. Killian, undeterred, acknowledged the potency of Heron's prophecies, surpassing even those received by the famed Cassandra. With a moment of prayer, Killian implored the divine for guidance. Heron, respecting the sacred ritual, stood in contemplation. Once the prayer concluded, Killian, seemingly satisfied, gestured for Heron to take his leave. As Heron made his exit, a shadow of discontent lingered. He remarked on the brevity since their recent contact and the immediate emergence of troubling issues. A serious expression etched across his features, Heron expressed annoyance, leaving the room with a sense of foreboding. The scene transitioned seamlessly to the first shrine, where Mikhail's butler, a figure of silent loyalty, registered surprise upon hearing about another demon's presence within the holy nation. Mikhail engaged in a conversation with his devoted butler. There was an air of familiarity as they discussed a situation reminiscent of a past encounter at the World Tree. Mikhail, however, couldn't help but notice the butler's surprise at the unfolding events. Curiosity in his eyes, Mikhail probed further, questioning the source of the butler's astonishment. With a solemn expression, the butler revealed a peculiar twist of fate. He had been incarcerated during the entire episode at the World Tree. The revelation unveiled a poignant truth, Mikhail, due to the quirks of their relationship, had a knack for leaving the aging butler stranded in random places, rendering him blissfully ignorant of significant occurrences. A hint of remorse flickered in Mikhail's eyes as he half-heartedly apologized, realizing the unintended consequences of his actions. Despite the attempt at reconciliation, a subtle tension lingered. The butler, feeling somewhat neglected, perceived Mikhail's apology as a mere formality. As the silent exchange continued, Mikhail, with a serious countenance, shifted the focus of the conversation to a matter of grave importance. Archbishop Killian, a figure of authority, was allegedly connected to a demon. Such an association, Mikhail declared, amounted to heresy. The weight of the accusation hung heavily in the air, emphasizing the severity of the crime. Even an archbishop, usually shielded by their lofty position, would struggle to escape the repercussions of such damning allegations. Cassandra, a presence marked by sagacious insight, interjected with a dose of skepticism. Proving heresy, she argued, was no simple task. Concrete evidence was paramount for convincing everyone of the crime. Leon, adding his perspective, acknowledged the challenge but insisted that they could not allow Archbishop Killian to operate unchecked, especially with the potential threat posed by the demon connection. Mikhail, undeterred, assured his companions that their cause was not without support. He alluded to the backing of the Pope, 
dismissing the notion that the Pope's authority was limited to ordinary circumstances. Mikhail argued that the temporary suspension of the Holy Knight's actions provided situational proof of Killian's heresy. Furthermore, Mikhail revealed a trump card, the Seal of Haikal, an artifact altering the balance of power within the religious hierarchy. His confidence in the strategy to expose Killian's transgressions was palpable. Shifting the conversation once again, Mikhail directed his attention to Leon. He pointed out the imminent qualification test in four days, where all archbishops would convene. A smirk played across Mikhail's face as he envisioned the forthcoming stage as the perfect opportunity to unveil Killian's heresy and eradicate the perceived demon threat. To ensure the success of his plan, Mikhail turned to Cassandra, surprising her with a request for assistance. He reiterated his trust in her abilities and emphasized the pivotal role she would play in the upcoming endeavor. That's why Mikhail is standing firmly by Cassandra's side, committed to supporting her every step of the way. To Mikhail, Cassandra's prophecies are not just valuable, they demand respect and protection. The idea of Cassandra facing a fate similar to her past troubles is something Mikhail cannot tolerate. In response, Cassandra opens up to Mikhail, revealing that she has never received direct communication from the Archbishop. Her unique ability has always been confined to glimpses into the future. Learning this, Mikhail offers reassurance, highlighting the rarity of individuals who possess the gift to see beyond the present. He underscores Cassandra's extraordinary talent, interpreting it as a conduit to connect with the divine. Encouraged by Mikhail's words, Cassandra is visibly surprised and seeks clarification on her potential to establish a connection with a higher power. Mikhail, unwavering in his confidence, assures her that she can indeed reach such spiritual heights. Despite Cassandra's lingering doubts about potential failure in the upcoming four days, Mikhail dismisses the notion entirely, claiming to have already engaged in an incredibly holy conversation with their Lord above. The scene then transitions to an outdoor setting, where Archbishop Narun enjoys a moment of tranquility while savoring his tea. Lost in thought, he reminisces about a peaceful morning that evokes memories of the past. His reflections lead him back to a time when he encountered a young prophet girl, Cassandra. In those days, she was devoid of hobbies, and Archbishop Narun took it upon himself to impart knowledge about tea. He shared insights into various regional tea leaves and taught her the delicate art of brewing. However, Archbishop Narun's musings take a melancholic turn as he recalls his inability to shield Cassandra from adversity. Despite his teachings, he was powerless to prevent her exile from the holy nation. Faced with the weight of these memories, he grapples with uncertainty about what steps to take next. Interrupting the Archbishop's contemplation, Mikhail approaches from behind, announcing his desire to discuss something of significance. Mikhail expressed sincere appreciation to Archbishop Narun for the opulent accommodations provided at the first shrine. Amidst the exchange of pleasantries, Mikhail shared a crucial piece of information with the Archbishop. His abilities as a warrior would be put to the test in two days. Archbishop Narun confirmed the impending evaluation and shed light on its purpose. A comprehensive assessment of Mikhail's abilities and a means to gauge the sentiments of each archbishop. However, the conversation took a somber turn as Archbishop Narun acknowledged the prevailing support for Sir Siegfried among many archbishops. In a moment of reflection, Narun considered the rumors circulating about Mikhail, tarnishing the honor as the supposed blood successor of Valpurgis. Whispers also spoke of Mikhail's entanglement with his ex fiancee painting a less than favorable picture of him. Despite these tales casting Mikhail in a negative light, Nurin privately mused that Mikhail might not be as nefarious as the stories portrayed. In an unexpected and somewhat hesitant moment, Archbishop Narun broached a sensitive topic. In the event that Mikhail wasn't chosen as the warrior, Narun earnestly asked for a favor to take care of Cassandra. Narun acknowledged the potential futility of this request, acknowledging the implication that Mikhail might not be selected as the warrior. Yet, Narun emphasized the importance of ensuring Cassandra's well-being hinting at a deeper connection between the characters. Intrigued by the request, Mikhail questioned Archbishop Narun about the reason behind entrusting Cassandra to him. Narun revealed a prophecy that foretold Cassandra losing her way if Sir Siegfried became the chosen warrior. The prophecy, dismissed by many, predicted Cassandra's slow and agonizing demise. Narun passionately explained that if Cassandra could leave the holy nation, it would bring her immense happiness, and he vehemently wished to spare her from further suffering. In the midst of their conversation, Mikhail acknowledged to Archbishop Narun that fulfilling the requested favor would be a formidable challenge. However, Archbishop Narun, displaying understanding, 
assured Mikhail that he accepted the difficulty of the task. The exchange took an unexpected turn when Mikhail dropped the revelation that he anticipated being selected as the warrior. Archbishop Narun, visibly taken aback, raised the issue of Archbishop Killian's widespread influence, emphasizing the significant backing Killian enjoyed from numerous priests within the holy nation. Mikhail, undaunted, confidently asserted that he had secured the support of both the Pope and Archbishop Narun himself. In response to Narun's attempt to downplay his own influence, Mikhail insisted that the Archbishop did possess considerable power and, bolstered by divine support, expressed unwavering confidence in overcoming the challenges ahead. As the conversation continued, a surprising twist unfolded. Archbishop Narun, momentarily turning away, was met with the surreal sight of silver wings extending from Mikhail's back. The ethereal display left Narun astounded, prompting him to rub his eyes in disbelief. The inexplicable manifestation of wings seemed to envelop Mikhail, adding an otherworldly element to the unfolding drama. In a moment of revelation, Archbishop Narun addressed Mikhail as my lord, seeking guidance on how he could be of service. Mikhail, reading Narun's amiable nature, speculated that Narun might have sensed the presence of Hey Kal, a mystical force accompanying Mikhail. Despite Archbishop Narun's existing support, Mikhail disclosed a simple yet pivotal reason for engaging in this conversation. In his past life, Archbishop Narun had met an unfortunate end. Mikhail was determined to eliminate any possibility of history repeating itself, signaling a deeper layer to their interaction. Confirming his suspicions, Mikhail successfully removed a seal from Archbishop Narun, a seal intricately linked to a demon. Set, an enigmatic entity accompanying Mikhail, expressed embarrassment for the holy nation, remarking that the clarity of the situation should have been apparent. By breaking the seal on Archbishop Narun, Mikhail unearthed evidence that Narun's previous demise wasn't a mere random assassination but rather a meticulously orchestrated event. Mikhail crushed the seal in his hand, frustration etching his features. Puzzled by the interference, he turned to Set, questioning who might be behind it. Set, with a reminder of her investigation into the Holy Nation, piqued Mikhail's curiosity. Eagerly, he inquired if Set had unearthed any crucial information. Set delved into the reasons behind the communication issues with Hey Cow that Mikhail had previously raised. She disclosed that aside from the remnants of the demon god, a more significant obstacle existed, the right eye of the demon god. To Set, it seemed like this particular part of the eye was located somewhere below their current position. The revelation prompted Mikhail to connect the dots. The mysterious multiplication of the remnants might well be tied to the presence of this demonic eye. Impressed by Set's deduction skills, Mikhail commended her for uncovering this crucial piece of information. Set, visibly pleased by the acknowledgement, expressed her happiness at being of help. With a newfound clarity about the source of the interference, Mikhail confidently declared that the next step was to locate and secure the demon god's right eye. Set, surprised by Mikhail's assurance, questioned how he intended to find the eye when its precise location remained a mystery. Unfazed, Mikhail assured Set that he already knew where to find it. Set, taken aback by Mikhail's revelation, sought clarification. She asked if Mikhail had been aware of the eye before she informed him. In response, Mikhail looked at Set with a mysterious smile, confirming that he had indeed possessed knowledge of the eye before their conversation. Set, caught between surprise and embarrassment, struggled to grasp the extent of Mikhail's pre-existing awareness. With the date for the selection of the warrior looming just two days away, Set questioned Mikhail's certainty about their location as the potential site for the demon god's eye. In response, Mikhail affirmed that they were indeed in the right place, emphasizing that the holy nation had intentionally concealed this particular location. Set, however, found it extreme and almost incredulous that the demon god's eyes would be hidden within the sacred confines of the first warrior's tomb. Surveying the monumental statue of the first warrior, Set remarked on its excessive size, deeming it pointlessly large. Mikhail, sharing Set's sentiment, expressed a hope that the Holy Nation had opted for a simpler memorial garden instead. However, it seemed the nation had gone overboard with the grandeur of the monument. Set, inquiring about Mikhail's potential warrior number if chosen, learned that he would be the eighth. Acknowledging the seven warriors who had preceded him, Mikhail conveyed his belief that the world had significantly deteriorated under their watch. As Mikhail touched the massive statue, he reflected on its symbolism and recognized its significance, despite being the source of the infection. Climbing the stairs toward the first warrior's tomb, Mikhail harbored concerns about the situation escalating into the worst-case scenario. The narrative painted a scene of tension, 
with the weight of history and the potential consequences of their mission hanging heavily in the air. Upon reaching the first warrior's coffin, Mikhail dismantled the barrier that surrounded it. Set, witnessing the open coffin, questioned whether the demons had hidden the demon god's eye inside. Confirming Set's suspicion, Mikhail revealed that the demons had indeed concealed the eyes within the coffin, suggesting the possibility that they had been there from the start. The first warrior's coffin, as the resting place of the initial warrior, offered an ideal hiding spot for the demonic eyes. Set, grappling with the implications, expressed disbelief, asserting that it was impossible for the demon god's eye and the warrior's body to coexist. In response, Mikhail proposed an alternative theory, suggesting that the eye might have been absorbed before the first warrior's death. This revelation shocked Set, as Mikhail, grappling with uncertainty, called upon his staff to open the coffin and put his hypothesis to the test. Hoping against confirmation, he knew that if his assumption proved wrong, the warrior's remains inside the coffin would remain undisturbed. The suspense hung in the air as the coffin creaked open. To Mikhail's surprise, and that of Set, the interior revealed not the expected warrior's corpse but an unsettling void, a hole that descended underground. The unexpected discovery left Set deeply concerned, fearing the worst. Turning to Mikhail, she sought guidance on their next steps in the face of this ominous revelation. Remaining calm, Mikhail assured Set that the situation wasn't as dire as it appeared. Seizing control, he leaped onto the coffin and reassured Set that their discovery was, in fact, fortunate. With confidence, Mikhail jumped into the mysterious hole, determined to confront and resolve whatever lay beneath. Meanwhile, the scene shifted to Heron, who called out for Delos without a response. The lack of acknowledgement led Heron to a grim assumption, the potential loss of his younger sibling. Frustrated by the chaos he attributed to the young Volpurgis, Heron attributes the recent chaos to the troublesome young Volpurgis, making it challenging to manipulate the previously compliant Archbishop Killian. The arrival of the youthful figure has surprisingly brought a sense of order. Frustrated by this unexpected turn, Heron deems the situation unpleasant and feels compelled to eliminate the disruptive influence of Mikhail. The need for control intensifies as Heron grapples with the unanticipated impact of the young Volpurgis on the once easily manipulated dynamics. In a moment of sinister realization, Heron detected the presence of the first warrior's coffin, prompting malevolent laughter. He saw an opportunity to simplify his predicament in a way he hadn't initially considered. The scene shifts inside the coffin, where Mikhail discovers the seated corpse of the first warrior, adorned with the demon's eye. The demonic eye communicates, expressing that they have long awaited for Mikhail's presence. 